is Valley News Live at 4. Good afternoon, everyone. Here's a look at today's top four at four in central Minnesota. Five people are hurt and a person is under arrest after a shooting at a health clinic. It happened at Alina Clinic in Buffalo, about 35 miles southeast of St. Cloud. Five people were hurt. At least one was critically injured and had to be airlifted. There were reports of an explosion at the clinic, but police say there were no bombs on the scene. Governor Walls addressed the shooting in a press conference this afternoon, calling it a tragic situation. Crews are cleaning up after a train derailment near Crookston. A train derailed last night around 8 near Highway 75 and County Road 252, scattering rail cars along the track and a nearby ditch. Nine of the train's 14 cars jumped the tracks. Deputies say some cars were leaking non-hazardous material, but there's no danger to the public. No one was hurt. Charges have been dismissed against a local music promoter accused of stabbing three people back in September. 47-year-old Jason Grant was charged with three counts of aggravated assault after an incident at his business on Fifth Avenue North. Court documents say a large fight broke out and several people were injured with a knife. Cass County's assistant state's attorney tells us several witnesses have come forward to confirm Grant's claim of self-defense. History on Capitol Hill. Today begins the second impeachment trial for former President Trump, a first in U.S. history. He is accused of inciting the January 6th attack on the Capitol. We'll bring you the latest from Washington, D.C. in about 15 minutes. That wraps up today's Top 4 at 4. Now here's a first look at our weather with Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hutch. Stacy, I sound like a broken record, even though we are not breaking records with this cold. It is just downright nasty out there. Temperatures this morning in the teens below for almost all of us. We kissed 20 below along the international border. Here is a look at those current wind chills, and it remains in the 30s below up north, 20s below down south. We have gusts over 30 miles per hour, so please make sure you're covering up exposed skin. It can freeze in 15 minutes or less getting stranded outside. Wind chill warning north, advisory continues south, and on National Pizza Day, we have your pizza forecast. Still warm pizza in the 6 o'clock hour, and then by 10 o'clock, it's probably going to be a little on the chilly side, and if you're one of those midnight snackers or later, watch out for some tooth chipping cold pizza. What does it mean temperature-wise? Let me show you. We're expecting temperatures to be colder than 10 below as we head to bed tonight and overnight with wind chills that'll be brutal. I'll have hour by hour details in your forecast for your hump day coming up here in a few minutes and we'll look at the extended forecast as well and talk a little bit about when it may may warm up. Yeah, nobody wants tooth chip and pizza. I mean, no, that can be that's expensive, painful and expensive. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Hutch. Yeah. Newly obtained documents shed some light tonight on a former West Fargo teacher who continues to be investigated by police. Valley News Team's Mike Morgan is here to explain. Mike. Stacey, it's been a week since Ron Thompson turned in his letter of resignation as teacher at Cheyenne and West Fargo High Schools. Last night, the school board accepted that resignation. Today, we looked into Thompson's personnel file, and there's nothing that would raise a red flag. The file, which is just over 100 pages, shows no disciplinary action against him. In fact, quite the opposite. For example, in 2019, a former principal thanked Thompson for always picking up extra classes, also thanking him for his hard work and dedication. Another comment in 2018 says that Thompson is very professional and is an asset to the school district as a whole. We also learned today that authorities say the investigation has no connections to the West Fargo School District. Other than that, police aren't commenting. We know that they served a search warrant on Thompson last Tuesday and visited with him at that time. And that's what prompted the letter of resignation. Stacy. Thanks, Mike. We also contacted the Cass County State's Attorney to find out if there's been a report filed for possible charges. That answer was no, so authorities are still investigating. Grand Forks is moving on to its next vaccination tier. Grand Forks Public Health and All True are now expanding to tier four of phase 1B in the state's vaccine plan. Everyone 65 and older with a high risk medical condition can get the shot. More than 4,100 doses have been given out at Grand Forks community vaccination clinics so far. To get on the wait list for your shot, call the number on your screen 701-780-6358, but only if you qualify for this or any of the previous tiers. Sanford Health has opened a new vaccination center in Moorhead. Valley News Team's Brian Sherrod spoke with Sanford's vice president today and brings us the latest. The new vaccination center is in the Moorhead Center Mall, right in the old furniture for less space. 
Now, this new center provides multiple stations for efficiency and a sizable space to keep patients from waiting out in the cold for their vaccinations. Just on Friday, the new clinic provided hundreds of vaccinations. More reasonable in a dedicated space uh, versus a, um, uh, you know, the clinic setting uh, when we're going to be giving that many vaccines and hope to give uh, give more. Sanford plans to receive 1,400 vaccination doses by the state this week. Dr. Griffin says the state has been very consistent with their dose levels. These vaccines will continue to vaccinate patients still in the 1B category, and these vaccine doses are now provided in pharmacies as well. Now, Dr. Griffin also says that spring is the idea time to see patients in the general public beginning vaccinations. If you're struggling to set up your own appointment, you're welcome to let a family member set it up for you to make it easier. Brian Sherrod, Valley News Live. Sanford says this will keep doses intended for their Minnesota clinics on their side of the river and will help clear up confusion about Sanford's multi-state operation. Uber and Walgreens are teaming up to get people vaccinated. The rideshare company and the pharmacy giant are joining forces to get people vaccinated who don't have a car or live near a pharmacy. Uber will offer free rides to Walgreens for those who book an appointment. The pilot program will start in Chicago, Atlanta, Houston and El Paso. The partnership is part of a pledge Uber made in December to offer 10 million free or discounted rides to make sure transportation doesn't prevent anyone from getting the COVID vaccine. Staying on top of the latest vaccine related news is easy. Just check out our VNL vaccine tracker. Open your phone camera and point it at the QR code on your screen, then tap the link that pops up. You'll have access to national and local resources at your fingertips. A South Dakota judge has tossed out a voter approved constitutional amendment legalizing recreational marijuana. Voters approved the amendment in November despite opposition from the governor. Her administration supported a legal challenge from two law enforcement officers who argued that the amendment was technically flawed. Marijuana supporters argued the lawsuit was an effort to overturn the will, will of the people. Lawyers expect an appeal to the state Supreme Court. Possession of small amounts of marijuana had been set to become legal on July 1st. USA Hockey's twin sister tandem is retiring after 14 years of international competition. Jocelyn and Monique Lar Lamaru made the announcement in an article published on the Players Tribune website. The 31 year olds are from Grand Forks and punctuated their careers by playing key roles in helping the U.S. win gold at the Olympics. Downtown Fargo's Red River Market is on the move. The farmer's market is expanding to a new location this season, Broadway and 2nd Avenue North. Market organizers say they're working with the city to figure out how to close several blocks to safely accommodate the market. They plan on shutting down 2nd Avenue North from Robert Street to 5th Street to give the vendors and attendees room to spread out. The 2021 season runs from July to October. We'd like to thank you for helping us support the Great Plains Food Bank. Our 2020 food drives brought in nearly $60,000, enough to give more than 177,000 meals to our neighbors in need. The food bank says they've seen unprecedented need for food assistance since the start of the pandemic, but they donated a record number of meals last year thanks to contributions from the community. Don't worry, if you missed out on our food drives, you can still donate at the web address there on your screen. Well, the latest from the historic second impeachment trial of former President Trump is straight ahead. Get out your kazoos. We did it. We made it to zero degrees for a high temperature today in Fargo. Still near 10 below along the international border. And yeah, it's still wind chilly. Your frigid forecast details are coming up right after this.